afternoon, everyone. How's your um, day going so far? I hope everyone had a wonderful and um, great weekend and uh, a wonderful and happy and safe Labor Day yesterday. And I um, hope your day is has gotten started off to a great day today. Um, I know a lot of people went back to school. Well, a lot of children went back to school. I know mine included their to day today was their first day. And of course, came along with issues with the system, the um, system being down. So they've been trying to work on that since through this morning. So, uh, so it's been a little slow process, but this is what we've been praying for for weeks for patience because we knew it was going to be a lot of things going on with the system. So I got a little frustrated earlier, but I'm better. I'm okay. No, but um, things seem to be okay. So just still trying to get all that situated. So hopefully everything will be back okay tomorrow but um that's how my day's been just trying to get all that situated with the kids and getting them online in the system so and so hopefully they'll be back on sometime within this hour i know the system i know she one of the teachers email said the system was back up and running so kind of waiting for that getting word on that to see Furthermore, what they want them to do. So we shall see. So today we are on Exodus chapter 7. Aaron to speak for Moses. We're continuing off from that part from Exodus chapter 6. And also Aaron's staff becomes a snake and the plague of blood. Okay. And so recap of exodus chapter 6 where god had promised the deliverance upon the israelites and so um after moses went to god and asked him about um the things that were going on with the people and he was upset about it because ever since he got there you know all this trouble was put upon him so moses went to god and questioned him about it so god was just basically you know telling him you know my his mighty hand um because of his mighty hand he will let them go and his mighty hand is what's going to drive them out of that country and so you know god just reassured him um god told him to go back to the israelites and tell him that you know he was going to bring them out and of course with moses telling the israelites this because they were so they were so um what it was they were discouraged because of all of what was going on to them, the cruel treatment towards them. They were so discouraged to where they didn't want to listen to them. So, um, of course, God also told Moses after that to go to Moses, I mean, go to Pharaoh and tell him to let the Israelites go. And then, of course, they gave a breakdown of Moses and Aaron, um, how they came about and their parents and of course um Aaron I mean not Aaron but Moses you know how he kept um down in himself and saying um how he had what if they don't listen to me because I have faltering lips you know stuff like that so he was down in himself he just didn't really believe and However, and you know, we we already see from what we were reading that Moses seemed to not really want to do this because he said back in one of the scriptures, why me? Why can't why don't you just get someone else to do it? So um that was a recap of Exodus chapter six. So here we are in Exodus chapter seven. So we're gonna get right into it. You can use your phone, Bible, or just listen and watch, however you choose to do it. So I'm gonna get um do a word of prayer and then we're gonna get right into it. Father, thank you for another day. Thank you for seeing us so far throughout this day. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for every sense and everything that you allowed us to do today, Father. We give you all the honor and all the glory, God. Thank you for being great. Thank you for always being there. Thank you for your grace and mercy. God, as I get ready to read your word, I ask that you please forgive me of my sins. Forgive us all of the sins we've committed before you today, Father, known and unknown. And God, I ask that you just pour out your spirit upon us, God. 
Give us wisdom and understanding. Bless us with your insight, Father. Whatever it is that you want us to gain from reading this scripture, Father, I ask that you pour it down upon us, Father. As many will hear, watch, and listen, I ask that you help them to receive and abide in your word. Help them to understand it as well, Father. Give them wisdom and understanding in it. And please help us to not lean on to our own understanding. So, Father, I ask that you just speak to me, through me, and for me, Father, and help me to read the words clearly and help me to understand the words clearly. And God, help me to have explain whatever it is that I need to explain. Help me to explain it clearly so that others can understand it, Father, as well. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and everything that you have done for us throughout this day. So, Father, continue to see us through. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, Exodus chapter 7. So remember, we last left off on Exodus chapter 6, where it ended on the last verse. It said, but Moses said to the Lord, since I speak with faltering lips, why would Pharaoh listen to me? That's where we left off at the last um, scripture on Exodus 6. So here it is, Exodus 7, Aaron to speak for Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, see, have, see, I have made you like God to Pharaoh and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. You are to say everything I command you and your brother Aaron is to tell Pharaoh to let the Israelites go out of his country. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart. This is what um, God had told Moses a few chapters back where he said that he was going to um, harden Pharaoh's heart. And here God is telling him again, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. And though I multiply my miraculous signs and wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt, and with my mighty acts of judgment, I will bring out my divisions, my people, the Israelites. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring the Israelites out of it. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them. Moses was 80 years old, and Aaron was 83 when they spoke to Pharaoh. So here we are. And I mean, on Aaron's staff becomes a snake. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when Pharaoh says to you, perform, perform a miracle, then say to Aaron, take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh and it will become a snake. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron threw his staff down in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. So Pharaoh some, then summoned wise men and sorcerers and the Egyptians, musicians, also did the same things by their secret arts. Each one threw down his staff, and it became, like, became a snake. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Yet Pharaoh's heart became hard and he would not listen to them, just as the Lord has said. Okay. So here we are, the plague of blood. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is unyielding. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he goes out to the water. Wait on the bank of the Nile to meet him. And take in your hand the staff that was changed into snake into a snake then say to him the lord the god of the hebrews has sent me to say to you let my people go so that they may worship me in the desert but until now you have not listened this is what the lord says by this you will know that i am the lord with the staff that is in my hand i will strike the water of the Nile, and it will be changed into blood the fish in the Nile will die and the river will stink the Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the streams of can and kennels, over the ponds and all the reservoirs, and they will turn to blood. Blood will be everywhere in Egypt, even in the wooden buckets and stone jars. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded. He raised his staff in the presence of Pharaoh and his officials and struck the Nile of the river. All and all the water was changed into blood. 
The fish in the Nile died, and the river smelled so bad that the Egyptians could not drink its water. Blood was everywhere in Egypt. But the Egyptian magicians did the same by their secret arts, and Pharaoh's heart became hard. Pharaoh's heart became hard. He would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. Instead, he turned and went into his place and did not take even this to heart. So he just, after all that happened, he just got up and he just went into his palace. Didn't take into account none of that was just happened like it never, it didn't even happen. And all the Egyptians dug along the Nile to get drinking water because they could not drink the water of the river. Seven days passed after the Lord struck the Nile. So seven days had struck after the Lord struck the Nile. So that concludes our reading of Exodus chapter seven. That concludes. We see all these different things that had happened to um, Pharaoh and even one of the greater things with this blood going on in the water and his heart was still hard. He did not care for what was going on. He did not want to listen. He refused to listen and still was not going to let his people go. I mean, let the Israelites go. So course caught God caused his staff to turn into a snake and he allowed this staff caused the staff to make all the water there turn into blood to where it killed all the um fish and it smelled really bad it had no water to drink and that Pharaoh didn't care just like no but this is what God said. He said in the beginning, he said, this is what he was going to allow to happen. He was, this is what you were going to have to do. But in the process of all this, I was going, I am going to harden Pharaoh's heart so that he won't listen. And so, of course, these things are the one, uh, these are the things that are happening in the process. And we're seeing that what God is saying is that's what's actually happening with him hardening his throughout these miraculous signs that uh, God had Moses and Aaron to perform with his staff and he's still not listening and we think back to what we do we see signs and wonders and miraculous things that happen from time to time just certain things that happen that are unexplainable that we may see like miracles like things that you like no that's impossible no that can possibly happen we see those things and though we see these things we see, God, we see God's wondrous works, but yet throughout what we see, it, 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 it's almost as if it doesn't phase us because sometimes we still allow our hearts to be so hard over certain things to where we do what we want to do, when we want to do it, and how we want to do, not thinking of the consequences or thinking about who is it hurting in the process because our hearts are so hardened. We, even though we believe even though we see what God is showing us right here. And yet it's like, okay, we may not see uh, certain signs as to what Pharaoh was seeing. As far as, you know, water turning into blood, you know, like those type of things. But we see other things and we know that God's hand is in it. But yet our hearts are still hard where we just, don't want to abide in what we are being told to do. So ask yourself this question. If we seen those type of signs as Pharaoh did, where God was really showing us some drastic things, like some really miraculous signs out here, if he was really showing us those type of things that he was showing them, would our hearts be still hardened? Would we still care enough to say yes or no? How, what would we do? But then again, it does go back to what is what we read. God allowed his heart to be hard. So he hardened Pharaoh's heart. 
So it was like, okay, if God is doing this, then really it's like, you have no choice. This has to, this has to happen. Whether you purposely wanted to or not, if God is making this happen or having this happen, then it's like, hmm, what can you do? God allows, he, he allows everything. He sets up everything in a certain order to allow certain things to happen, to bring forth certain things that he's trying to bring forth. So what would be the reason why he allowed um, Pharaoh's heart to be hardened? Because it clearly states, I, but I will harden Pharaoh's heart. So this was God's hand in this. He made this and allowed this to happen. He allowed and made Pharaoh's heart harden. So let's just, we just have to read along to kind of figure out why did God allow or make um, Pharaoh's heart harden? Because God didn't, he didn't have to, he could have just had Pharaoh, I mean, Moses and them just come in and just tell Pharaoh what he told, what they told, what they were told to say. And then Pharaoh said, okay, let him go. Bye. But God was like, no, I'm going to harden his heart. So what is God's purpose behind why? He is hardening Pharaoh's heart when it could be something so simple. But we have to think back to God is just not simple. God is a God of certain order, certain ways. And he always has a purpose and an agenda behind what he does. And sometimes what he does, we can be like, well, God, why just don't do it that way? Because that could be so simple. That could be so easy. But with God, it's not always that simple. It's always something to it. So I pray that um, you probably, you got some kind of insight, wisdom from it. You are blessed by the word, the hearing of it, the reading of it. And tune in with me tomorrow, God willing, and we will read Exodus 8 and see what for, what else forth we have. So remember today was the first plague. We got the plague, which is the plague of blood. So tomorrow we're going to get into it and see what else do we have next that we're going to read? And is, is Pharaoh still going to harden his heart? Or is he going to come to terms with everything? However, we're going to see. So tune in again with me tomorrow. And thank you so much for taking time out of your day to tune in with me today. Share your comments, your thoughts, whatever. You know, I would love to hear from you. Don't forget to love on someone today. Pray for one another. Be encouraging. Speak kind words and help someone that may be in need. And um. Don't forget to be a blessing to someone. Always, ever, never forget to be a blessing. And remember, you can always be a blessing by treating others how you want to be treated. You want others to treat you with love and respect. You want others to help you when you're in need. So when you when you're thinking of that way, you'll all it always fall in line. And you'll always be a um, blessing to someone, even if it's just correcting someone, but correcting someone in a kind way and showing someone someone might be doing something and don't realize that. They're doing something wrong. They're doing it the wrong way. Offer some words of wisdom, encouragement, something. But always look for ways to be a blessing to others. So thank you again for tuning in. And I will lead you with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for insight. Help us to always look for blessings in each scripture that we read. And help us to be a blessing to others. Thank you for allowing me to be a blessing to others by reading your scripture every day and your word and being able to explain it in ways that you bring forth to my mind. Continue to use me in that way to be able to deliver your message, Father. Forgive me for the things that I may have done wrong today, Father. Forgive all of us, my children, my husband, our family, friends, everyone, God. And just continue to lead us on the right path today, Father. Just let your arms surround us, Father. Comfort us, shield us, direct us, protect us. Heal us, protect us, comfort us, Lord. Do your great work in us, Father. Whatever it is that needs to be done, do it, Father. But please help us to resist all the evil works that are out there, Father God. Help us to resist it, Father, and not give in to it, Father. But help us to be wise, to keep our eyes open, to always be on alert, Father, when the enemy is at work, Father. So, Father, just show us the way. Keep us safe as we travel. Help us to be safe, Father, by, you know, um, face masks, hand washing, and social distance the best way we know how. But help us to keep others safe the best way we can, Father. But Father, just work everything out, everyone in school and those that are at work. Just help everyone to have a great day and let everything work out, Father, the way it needs to. 
We thank you so much and we love you. Please bring healing and forgiveness upon each and every one of us, Father. Help us to repent, Father, and care for the needs of others. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my God. Amen. All right, everyone. Love you, and I will talk with you tomorrow. Bye.